Be smart. Brush off the online noise. Have you ever wondered why physics has to be so difficult? Why is always a dangerous question, and the answer to this particular why question depends on how deep you want to go into the subject. A good starting point may be this. When physics is introduced in school, students learn about Newton's mechanics. This means that they come sideways into a subject that can trace back to its roots at least 6,000 years. We talk 6,000 years of accumulated and often disposed of knowledge about nature. Each new explanation of a physical process is built and builds upon what is already known. To be quite frank, what are the expectations here? We don't run before we walk, after all, and talk about a challenge for the teachers. Newton's physics, as far as it is taken in school, is not even amongst the most complex things teachers have to teach and students have to study. One of the typical examples for physics as a difficult and somewhat weird subject is the whole deal about particles and waves. Small particles, such as electrons, can be looked upon as either one or the other, depending on what we want to find out about. That can't be right, now can it? Nature doesn't wait for us to see how we want to tackle something before she decides which rules are going to be true. Einstein, at any rate, didn't think that was the case either. The results from the experiments done on the subject drove him nearly crazy. Poor students. As mentioned before, we develop ways to describe nature which are meaningful to us. Waves and particles are concepts, crutches which are supposed to help us imagine something which cannot be imagined. It is decidedly not surprising that our images and allegories do not fit nature exactly. How do we learn anything then? I know of a professor who once told his students that you have to just turn around and do something else sometimes. Take a cup of coffee, for example. Perhaps talk about the weather or something else for a while before you even begin to understand particles and waves. The professor continued by pointing out that it could be a good idea to get a good night's sleep before turning to the subject once more. In addition, it could be advantageous to find as many different sources on the subject as possible, not because any of them finally explained everything in simple terms. No, to be exposed to many different points of view would accelerate the process towards finding our own way to approach the problem. Yeah, complex topics finally explained in a simple way. I get a shiver running down my spine when I read something like this or hear it. Physics is tough. Mathematics too. Think about it this way. It takes an effort to get up a mountain. Not everybody wants to do it either. There are paths which are easier than others. That is true. But at the end of the day, you will have to get all the way up anyway, since the mountain is simply there. That is how it is. Period. It will take something to walk or climb to the top. Why do some people even like to embark on such a tough hike? Well, once you are up there. We're supposed to think about the whole thing, think about something else, and then think about the whole thing again and again. Approach the subject from a different angle. Take a break, sleep, meet friends, do whatever else in order to then come back to the physics time after time from all possible vantage points until we get a grip of it. If you sit there thinking, wait a minute, that's not about intelligence, that's about work ethic and patience, you'd be right. This is also not a revolutionary idea. It is like the rest of life, really. In football, for example, the process can be summarized in two sentences. Go to practice, leave practice. For example, you have to be enormously talented and be born with the right mindset to truly learn about the physical principles and master all the mathematics on the last day before the exam in order to do well or even just pass the exam. And one can ask the question of how you got to be good enough at mathematics without practice. 
Physics as a subject also makes it rather easy to construct excuses. You ask whether electrons are particles or waves, get an answer from the school books, get confused by the answer, and conclude that physics is too strange to deal with. This is a powerful line of thought because physics is strange in many ways. How so? I don't have a definite answer, but sometimes I feel like it has something to do with humans wanting to envision and categorize absolutely everything. Electrons simply have to be particles or waves. In the same way, planets simply have to be planets. Just ask Pluto. If you had asked the professor, he would have told you that learning about nature is something different entirely than to know what things are called. We are not talking being interested in science. We are talking a profound wish to obtain knowledge which leads to what is called scientific literacy. I'll put a link down in the description to a definition of that particular term. Imagination and categorization are, in this regard, only a tool, nothing more. At the very least, we should not make a fuss about not being able to envision and or categorize something. Electrons are electrons, period. Take enough coffee breaks and you will know what I mean. <laughs>